That's what we did in the emergency crawl out to this flat. Um, it was, the breaker was tripping out while Martin was having a shower. So he flicked the breaker back on again. So that went, tripped back out again. And then out here went with a massive bang. So he blew, it blew the uh, cartridge fuse in here. So this is the incoming supply for the set of flats. All the meters, all the isolators. So in there, there was a 45 amp, <clears throat> 1361 I think, or 45 amp cartridge fuse. So, as he's, the, when I've tested the cables, I've done an insulation resistance test on the cables. There was a dead short across one of the cables. So the cable going between the isolator and the shower, which I'll show you in a minute. So yeah, uh, when he flicked the breaker back on again, it took this fuse out here. So this is the one that went with the bang. So this could have been a higher rated fuse anyway, because it's a 10 mil supply in this flat. He's got an 8.5 kilowatt shower in here. He could, if he's got, you know, uh, say, um, a cooker on, washer, electric shower could quite easily go over that 45 amps. I mean, the shower is probably 40 itself. So you probably shower is probably near 40 anyway. And then with some other stuff on you can see you could push that 45 amp supply past it. But the reason why it blew the uh, fuse, there was two, two reasons. One, between here and the shower, there's uh, a dead short on a cable. So the cable between there and here, I've pulled the isolator off. I did an insulation resistance between there and there and it was fine. I did an IR with the shower pull cord on. I've disconnected the cables at the shower and then we got a dead shot. So there's two two reasons why this has happened. Uh, two reasons why we've got faults here. Tripping RCBOs and also blowing cartridge fuses. So you can see in there you've got a brown and a blue 10 mil cable and a black and a red 6 mil cable. So from the consumer unit it's a 6 mil red and black goes up jumps in the ceiling goes across there to the isolator and then from the isolator it's brown and blue to the shower so it comes back out the ceiling there in a trunking to the shower in a red and black six mil so somewhere between here and there there's a joint and I'm going to guess, guess that this patch on the ceiling here is where the joint is. So maybe when they installed the shower, they were reusing an old cable that wasn't quite long enough or something. So they've just put a piece from there to there. That's my guess anyway. So there'll be a joint somewhere buried that's got a dead short. And um, that's the reason why we're getting the insulation resistance readings we are, and then also the reason why that cartridge fuse blew the way it did is because of that dead short on the joint somewhere that we can't see. And then also the second thing that was wrong, so there's a couple of things wrong here. You can see the cables overheated there and burnt. So that was on its way out anyway, this breaker, this RCBO here it's all burnt in the top so that's either um, a faulty RCBO or it's either loose connections in the top of the RCBO so this board was done fairly recently um, and not signed off by anybody so it's a budget range fuse board um, and then when I check these connections here this one was loose these two were loose so the neutrals were arcing in here as well in the sockets this one was completely loose live and neutral and the neutral in here was um, was loose too so it's had a right it's had a bad job done of the installation anyway it's not been certified signed off these apparently it was a couple of ladies that own this place turned it around did some refurbs they've had a slapdash job done and then 
Martin's bought the flat and inherited these issues now and this is how it's come to light one is showing itself here with a tripping RCBO due to the overheated cables and two blew the main supply due to poor installation here as well so what we're going to do here is completely rewire the circuit from there I'm going to do it in a 10 mil case uh, this is pulling 40 amps plus so new pull switch new 10 mil cable from there to the pull switch from there to the shower and completely rewire that to get rid of any dodgy joints we've got and then we're going to change that consumer unit for a Hager RCBO board and then I'm going to do an installation certificate for this and test the whole flap so he's got some certificates for his insurance if anything like this is to go wrong again so I've rewired it now um, so we've got the whole above, I've got took all the old uh, trunkings off where it just popped into the ceiling. Um, covered the fire fire alarm up as well, so this he's got smoke detectors in his house but he's got a fire alarm that's linked to the building as it's a multi-storey uh, uh, set of flats, like multiple occupancy building. So yeah, make sure that covered that up so because all this dust would have set that off as well. So we've cut a hole up there uh, and we're going to do a piece of conduit out into the new board. I'm going to lose that piece of trunking as well. Uh, that Try and get rid of these cables that just go behind these because these pipes are hot heating pipes. So anything that's going behind these I'm going to lose and it's going to be contained in a piece of conduit. So just I'll tidy that up while I'm here as well. <coughs> we've put an isolator deep box there for a two gang upright isolator outside the bathroom main reason why I've done that is because the pull switch the way that it was done before it was right up the side of a joist and it, the, the, the plasterboards all knackered where it's been not it's not been cut out very well it's just absolutely destroyed so I'm going to try and put a new 47 mil plasterboard box in that it's just not going to go in well especially with these heavy 10 mil connections in so I'm just going to patch that up so what I've done is we've cut a hole there in the back of the bathroom door in line with that one. So we've fished the cable straight in this and the joist have run in our favour here which is good down this, this direction. So we've fished the cables over, one into, into the isolator, back out the isolator and then we've cut another hole here and then we've had a joist to drill through here so that's what this hole's for there. So we've had We've got a hole through the joist to this side and then we've notched, notched out there and coincidentally it was bang on a joist there so we've had to kind of cut a hole outside and it's going to nip into the trunking and go down there and then this will be patched up as well so this is just all yeah, ready for this cable going into it to the shower. So if you look in the regs book this ceiling here is packed with insulation. So I think a six mil cable in the regs book clip direct can take like 40 amps or something, 42 amps maybe. As soon as it goes through insulation, it derates it down to 27 amps, I think. Uh, to between 27 and 32 maybe. So, um, yeah, so that actual, I can't remember exactly, but we, I checked in the book anyway, and due to the insulation in there, that derated the cable uh, below the 40 amps that this is carrying. So that cable was technically over um, overloaded because of the insulation that it was going through. So I've upped the size of the cable to a 10 mil from the consumer unit protected by a 40 amp breaker going through the uh, ceiling with insulation in. So we've improved that. <coughs> uh, another thing we found, the fan. Oh. So the fan was uh, catching, the blades were catching on the enclosure, it was making a noise. So we've got a look up there, there is a pipe up there, like a f just it's not quite four inch, I think it's a bit smaller. Sort of rigid pipe that goes all the way 
down the, through the building, through his kitchen, and then out the, out the outside of the wall. So this was just kind of slid over the end of it, and then it was kind of poking down, and it, it wasn't even on the fan, it was just sat kind of like that, like with too much tension on it. So the fan wasn't connected to this duct, and so basically it was blowing into the roof. As it's about, as it's like a five meter run from here to the outside of the building, what I'm going to do is, uh, as, and all the ceilings, the hole where the fan was cut out wasn't cut out in the right place anyway, so that would have to be moved over because it was too much of an angle on that ducting to get it in properly. This ceiling's been patched up badly, so I'm going to get a 450 by 450 fire rated ceiling hatch, cut this out, cut all this messy ceiling out, and then I'll fix that in. And then we're going to mount an inline fan inside the roof void, connect it onto that pipe, and then connect the ducting out of the ceiling in here. Uh, so it's a nice, powerful fan because that fan is, was not powerful enough to send. It's got to get all the moisture out of here down a fa over a five meter run of pipe, and it was just a poxy little, you know, four four inch wall fan. So you need something that's going to be powerful enough to send all the the moisture and air out of this bathroom all the way out to, out to the other side, out of the building. So yeah, I've ordered that fire rated hatch. It's, this you can see it's two skins of plasterboard, as there's a living space above. But it's a shared accommodation, so. It needs to be fire rated, everything down here needs to be fire rated, so it's a specific access panel which has got an hour's fire rating on it. Uh, and that means we can improve the fan as well whilst I'm cutting these holes and doing all this work. I'm just changing this uh, consumer unit now. I'm just showing you a few bits that, what the reason for the um, almost electrical fire was and few uh, reasons why this has been fitted badly and a few reasons why I don't like this manufacturer fuse box as well so <clears throat> never into budget range equipment this stuff is supposedly more of a mid-range rather than budget but I still would class this as, as budget range so generally we don't we don't fit that sort of stuff so um, it's never a winner really unless it's a, it's a good quality make for for us. Here's the RCBO. So if I'm using these I like to use the miniature RCBOs which are available in fuse box as well but these are cheaper so people always go for the taller ones as the cheaper whereas I like the shorter ones which are the size of the, an MCB just like that. Gives you more space in the board to make your cables off nicely and fit. Get tubes in the back to fill any gaps with silicon and foam. And then also leaves just plenty of spare space if you want for the extra circuits you might install in future. So this guy's installed the board, which was maxed out. There's no allowance for any additional circuits, which is a poor job, I think. So always at leave, you know, you want to, I believe, in three to five spare ways we do uh, in any boards that we fit. <coughs> And then spare room in there if you make the consumer unit off nice and neatly, which this was a bit of a mess. For such a small consumer unit as well, it's very easy to keep tidy because it's so small. There's hardly any circuits and you still made a mess of it. Um, so, <clears throat> yeah, bigger board, more space to make your cables off neatly, shorter RCBOs, to, again, to make, make the job a lot neater and more manageable for getting connections back out for annual testing, not annual testing, 10 yearly testing or five yearly testing dependent if it's a private property or if it's a rental property so you know these cables are going to be being disconnected taken back out every five years to check ring continuity r1 r2s etc insulation resistance so the neater they are and everything in the correct order uh, is better for your five yearly testing as well and it can all go back no strain on the cables or anything like that so lots of reasons why more space is a good thing. Um, so yeah, there's there's no foam or silicon used in the back there and fire could easily spread out of this. So, you know, you could say that it's backed onto a brick wall so it doesn't need it. But you've got the big gap here at the top of the consumer unit where fire could spread out. So I, I would have put fire silicone in that as well. Uh, 
So an another thing about these fuse box <coughs> boards is that it comes with a breaker to protect the um, surge protection. Now you can get these in, in, in single modules. I'm not quite sure what the difference is between this double module and single module. Um, but we've got a neutral connection and then a live connection and then an earth connection. Um, I need to check that. Uh, but anyway, these take up two ways in a board we use the Hager which take up two ways but the Hager ones don't require a breaker to protect it so you've got an extra way used up in a board here with a breaker just to protect your surge so I don't like that about this as well we only like it when you've just got this and then you've got all your available ways then for circuits so that's encroaching in your space in the board as well so again another reason why I don't rate this particular brand um, here's the the culprit of the almost electrical fire so it's hard to tell whether this is a faulty device or whether it was a poor job by the electrician so I'm gonna go with poor job by the electrician so that's probably a loose connection uh, of a neutral there which was arcing and then it almost caught, caught on fire and blew this and then blew the 45 amp cartridge fuse as well so it must have been a lot of fault current to blow that 45 amp cartridge fuse out there. That's the, yeah, that's that. Then there, no silicon in it. Gaps at the back. Right, so another thing with the fitting of the board is you can see at the top there's no screws at the back, none, not one there, or not one there either at the back. So this board is not even fixed at the top. So it's got some fixings at the bottom, but not at the top. So the board itself hasn't been, this is a super rust job. Um, it's not been certified. So this, maybe this took this guy three hours to whip this over. All the connections were loose. So the incoming supply there was not, was, was extremely loose. That, the, that one was very loose. This one was, you know, not tight enough. This one was extremely loose. Um, or the neutral conductor and then that one was extremely loose live and neutral the sh the shower one was extremely loose hence the damage the socket circuit was extremely loose as well and these two were okay so absolute piss poor job this guy's done in a very short period of time using the cheaper products not done a good job all round of fitting it and then not certified it as well. So he will have been in and out of here very quickly and charged a premium for fitting it. He'll have charged the same cost he charges for fitting a consumer unit elsewhere. Um, and then also probably, you know, to keep the cost down as well. So he's more competitive, he's using the cheaper equipment. So again, all round supplying of certain stuff for reasons because it's cheaper and then the slapdash job, no certification. And that's what you get for a cheaper consumer unit install. So you want to watch, you know, what who you get in to install it. If someone is a lot cheaper than the other person, you want to be asking questions why it's that much cheaper, not just going off the cheapest quote. You say, but well, why is this guy's quote 500 quid more than that guy? And then you should get an explanation. For example, this guy might have charged 400 quid to fit this. You might have charged 200 quid to, to fit it and then it might have been 200 quid for the board and he's gone. Yeah, if we were fitting it, the board would have cost 500 quid alone. More, so it would have been 100 pound more than this guy's full install. So the, the materials alone are more expensive than what this guy's complete job of install and materials. Then we have a day or two days, depending on the size of the house, one to install the, the consumer unit properly and then another day for fully testing the entire property. So we'll charge two days labor, plus 500 quid's worth of materials, at least 500 quid for you know a decent size RCBO, surge protection, Hager, consumer unit. So there, there's a, a why we would be two times, 
it three times more expensive than what this guy would have been. Another thing I just noticed while I've took this off is this uh, din rail was sliding about like that. You can't actually tighten it up because the screws just just keeps turning. That's it. So that was like that inside the consumer unit as well. So that's um, faulty, faulty product there as well. Screws just turning in the tapped piece of metal. So another example of a cheaper product. So this is the um, Hager surge protection. So it takes up two modules in the board. No breaker needed to um, protect the cables, and there's no cables going. The only thing it's got is a tail there for the earth connection. No other neutrals and lives going everywhere because it's got this little staggered buzz bar. So it goes right across the screw connections on the on the front of the isolator. And slides into its own slides into its own little section. So it slides into them there and into the front of them there. And it's not, whereas normally what happens is there's two lots of cables stuffed in, one in front of the other or whatever. It's quite, it can be quite untidy and stuff. So it's got this, it's, I like the fact that it's a separate connection for that alone. And then that leaves the, the connections at the back available for the cable for the neutral bar at the top or for the buzz bar, uh, in, you know, on its own. So that's the difference between the Hager one and the other types of surge protection.